Hey tea friends and family, Megan Bristow here and today in this short video I wanted to share with you a particular passage from the book of tea which some of you will know as Tama Home. I have it right here and I'm using my tea scoop as a bookmark. It is a book that I have been reading slowly during tea sessions and I came across a passage today about the greatness in small things and the smallness in great things and this correlation between Zenism and Teaism that I wanted to share with you. Let's talk about what we're drinking today. I am drinking a lovely hojicha roasted green tea from Japan. This particular hojicha comes from Teora. I have brewed, brewed? I have brewed other teas from Teora. I have reviewed other teas from Teora. They are saved in several playlists on the channel and I will also link to their website if you would like to purchase any of their teas for yourselves. I've always come away quite the happy drinker. clean and crisp, wood smoke, earthy, burnt brown sugar with just a, a hint of saltiness in the finish, just a hint, really clean finish. Sitting around a campfire on a winter day. That's this cup. A special contribution of Zen to Eastern thought was its recognition of the mundane as of equal importance with the spiritual. It held that in the great relation of things, there was no distinction of small and great, an atom possessing equal possibilities with the universe. The seeker for perfection must discover in his own life the reflection of the inner light. The organization of the Zen monastery was very significant of this point of view. To every member except the abbot was assigned some special work in the caretaking of the monastery. And curiously enough, to the novices were committed the lighter duties, while to the most respected and advanced monks were given the more irksome and menial tasks. Such services formed a part of the Zen discipline, and every least action must be done absolutely perfectly. Thus, many a weighty discussion ensued while weeding the garden, paring a turnip, or serving tea. The whole ideal of Teaism is a result of this Zen conception of greatness in the smallest incidents of life. Taoism furnished the basis for aesthetic ideals. Zenism made them practical. So if you've ever wondered while observing a Japanese tea ceremony, whether that be matcha or sencha, how they have elevated this simple daily task into an art form, you know, entering a, a higher level of consciousness to perform it. He's saying it's, it's Zenism, Zenism which teaches the, the greatness in small things. And, and its opposites, the, you know, the smallness that should be appreciated in great things. And I really like that because I feel like, and you probably agree if you're watching this, you encounter some people who just don't understand your love and your devotion to, to tea. 
They don't get it. And you try to explain, but I feel like it takes a certain perspective. Someone who's reached a certain understanding of, oh, well, there is there's greatness in small things. You find beauty and peace in serving tea, whether to yourself or to other people. I get that. You know, and I feel like those people either themselves see it or there's something that they do, some small daily thing that they've turned into a ritual for themselves. And so they understand how someone can be so absolutely in love with tea. That's all for today. Just a little passage, a little enjoyment of some organic hojicha. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the passage. Um, are there any other little things that you have turned into a ritual, a daily ritual that you find beauty and peace in? Yeah, got something in my eye. <laughs> in the meantime, wherever you are, I hope you have a wonderful day and enjoy a good cup of tea. And until next time, see ya!